Chippy and Mimi are BFFs, Brandy is spazzing out in the loony bin, and Orlando and Ruby are having another baby. This is my review, breakdown, commentary of Carl Weber's The Family Business, Season 4, Episode Number 9, titled Seeing Things. At the end of the last episode, we saw where the dirty cop pulled Chippy and Vegas over. But this time, Nene and Lauren pulled up with the camera phones and he couldn't really do anything except let them go with the warning. In our next scene, it's the beginning of an eye-opening moment for Brandy, which is what I talked about in the last episode. So I'm glad that she's coming to her senses. She had a nightmare and a flashback of Sasha and Chippy, and she was reminiscing about them giving her her exit plan. And it was then that she realized that Chippy is Orlando's mom and she is in fact the woman that she saw at Fresh Meadows and I knew that Brandy would finally figure it out at some point it's just you know she wasn't really thinking about it but now she knows exactly who Chippy is now she can move forward and in our next scene here Chippy took the time to thank Nini she had to thank her for distracting the cop when they were pulled over and Nini she was <laughs> she offered to take Chippy out for a mani pity you know, just to take her mind off of LC. And, you know, I'm really glad that this happened because I was beginning to wonder about Nini, right? Because she's hot and cold. You know, you really can't take a temperature sometimes. So I'm just glad that this moment happened. Nevada was playing chess against himself when Vegas walked in. And Vegas let him know how proud of him he was. You know, just a typical father-son moment. When Nevada asked if there was any news on LC, Vegas told him that there were no new leads. But then Nevada told him him, that he may be overlooking a potential resource, which is his mom, Consuela. And he let his dad know that Consuela is not just running a WHORE house, but she's running one of the most elite organizations in the whole underworld. He let his dad know that Consuela is monetizing information that she's getting from her customers. So with this in mind, he took his son's advice and he's going to go and pay Consuela a little visit. So in our next scene, Brandy is having yet another flashback, seeing Chippy really got her shook right this is when Dennis and his sidekick popped up she told him that she thought that Larry should have a visitor at least one because maybe it'll make him feel better and Dennis was like mm -mm, that is not a good idea <laughs> Not a good idea at all. He would not recommend that. So she just kind of let it go. Then Dennis moved on into the room with Elsie and just started tasing him for no reason at all. But of course, Lou's voice was heard in the background by Elsie and he told him that he's got to stay strong. Then we'll move on to Consuela and Juan, who's making up for some lost time. And then Ramon came to the door. <laughs> Y'all listen, do y'all remember Ramon when they were um, being held captive? And like every scene that he was in, he just seemed like he was on his last breath. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't care what scene Ramon is in. All I can do is think about when they were held captive and he just couldn't, he couldn't talk, he couldn't move, he couldn't do anything. He was just barely hanging on. So anyway, he came to tell Consuela that she had a visitor. Vegas was there to tell her that he needed her help. So then we'll move back to Brandy and she's having more flashbacks. She's telling herself, I got to get out of here, but there's really nowhere to hide. Then she decided, you know, I'm just going to quit my job. And then she goes, well, no, I'm not going to quit my job. So then she started on the internet, Googling Larry. She wants to know where he's from, if his family is crazy. She just wants to get all this information on Larry or LC or whoever they are today. <laughs> Sonia and Curtis. Listen, I'm so sick of Sonia like I really am. She wants to know where Nene and Chippy went to to get their nails done. And Curtis told her that he didn't know. So when she left out to try to go and get some information on where they went to, Lauren stepped out of the kitchen to warn Sonia and told her that she better think twice about running her mouth. And she said it with her gun in her hand. So Sonia went and grabbed her gun. <laughs> But Junior stopped her. He, you know, he grabbed her. He wants to know what's going on. And so Sonia told him everything that was going on. She said that they were there. And the only reason that they came is that they're looking for Kenny, who came there to kill LC. Then Junior went to confront Curtis. And of course, Junior is pissed off. Now Sonia want to jump bad and start running her mouth. But I just think it's a little too late. You know, people have lost their lives. LC is missing. And Sonia should have said something like three or four episodes ago, maybe more. But Junior's ready to lay hands on Curtis for real. But then Chippy and Nene came in from the nail shop. She told Junior and the family that Nene has already told her what's going on. And she would have done the same thing, you know, to protect her child. 
which we can understand. She told Junior, don't worry about any of that. Let's just try to find Elsie and Kenny. So while Brandy is trying to get more information on Larry, one of the orderlies ran into the room and told her that Sarah, something was wrong with Sarah, right? So she ran out and she really couldn't get all the information that she needed. She was like halfway through. So she ran out and there's Sarah laying there on the floor dead. Now, let me just say this part. I don't care what we say about Larry Duncan. He's not a fool. He's very smart. He's a manipulator, to say the least, right? He knows how to get people to do what he wants them to do. He was grilling Brandy about reading Sarah's chart because apparently Sarah has taken some medicine, looks like a simple Tylenol, which is what killed her. And Larry told Brandy that Sarah has a severe allergy to a acetaminophen. But then Brandy said, well, no, I thought that she has an allergic reaction to salicylate, which is only active in aspirin and not Tylenol. Now, listen, I'm not a nurse and I'm definitely not a doctor, so I may be mispronouncing these names or butchering them, but y'all know what I'm talking about. So this is where the manipulation began. He started asking Brandy questions like, do you have an attorney? You know, things like that. And she was like, well, what do I need an attorney for? And he was like, you know, the authorities are gonna show up and I don't know how they're gonna feel about this involuntary manslaughter. So while they were in his office having a chat, apparently Dr. Kennel has been uh, snitching. <laughs> He's been snitching on Brandy and told um, Larry that she's been snooping around. He told Brandy that Larry was a ward of the state, he has no family, and that his records are classified by the U.S. government. So any information that she wants to find out about Larry Duncan needs to go strictly through him period. So then when the cop showed up, he kind of threw the cop off and said, you know, I just wanted to contact you guys about graffiti on the west wing of the building. Again, another manipulation tactic. He wanted to make sure that Brandy knew that he was on her side. So after this meeting, she walked out into the yard and she saw Holly kissing on Brother X. And when Holly confronted her, she tried to pretend that she didn't see anything. And Brandy told her she was just going to mind her business. She told Holly to be careful because Xavier is a bad boy. But Holly embraced Brandy. She told her that she liked her and that she was family now and they take care of family. Holly left. Brandy went back to her Google investigation and she saw Elsie and Chippy. She thinks that Chippy is haunting her, but then, you know, she saw the picture of Orlando with Elsie and Chippy. So now she has the full scope. She's got the full picture. She knows exactly who Elsie is. So she then reached out to Orlando and she was asking about, you know, do you know Elsie or Larry Duncan? And then Orlando was like, why are you calling me with these random names that I know nothing about? Why did he say this? Like, I'm lost because I know that this is for a fact what he said because I watched it three times to be sure. Why did he pretend that he doesn't even know his own father or his uncle? But nonetheless, Larry overheard the conversation and then he told Kenny that Brandy needs to be eliminated. So Brandy's leaving to go home when she's stopped by a cop. And of course, I thought, and I think we all thought, that it was the same dirty cop who's been killing all the Duncans and the Duncans entourage. He told her that her left tail light was out and then he let her go. So now um, Larry came in to visit LC and he told LC that he needed to get some sleep. And of course the issue of the money came up and the fact that LC had him uh, thrown into the crazy house. And I'm really wondering if there is any type of truth to what Larry is saying, because this is what he's sticking to, right? Like he says this every time he sees LC. He's been saying this for years. Do y'all think that there's any truth to it? I actually posted this in my community post and I needed to know what your opinion was because I think that there's a little bit of truth to what he may be saying because he keeps saying it. Then he started with the delusion and he was asking LC if he heard voices. Then he told LC, well, I hear them too. Is it daddy that you hear? Is it Sasha? Is it Lou? Then he was telling LC it's just like old times. The Duncan boys are back together again. And then he started in with uh, accusing LC of having Lou killed. But of course, Michael Diamond killed Lou. And Curtis killed Michael Diamond to cover it up. So they all have like very colorful lives, like all of them. So Brandy realized that she's blocked by Orlando. And it's really good that she made it home. But then she saw some headlights pull into the driveway. And she had to think fast. Because sure enough, here comes Holly, Dennis, and 
Kenny ready to take her out. So she left her purse and her phone there and jumped out of the window. End scene. That concludes this review of Carl Weber's The Family Business, season four, episode number nine. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the video, you know I'd appreciate it. And if you're a fan of The Family Business, go ahead and sub to the channel because I do video breakdowns like this one all the time. Thank you so much once again, you guys, and I'll see you on the next one.